of the fun in gardening each year is experimenting with new annuals, and that's exactly what we're doing in this bed on the north side of our studio garden's barn. The majority of these annuals are new ones that were introduced to us from Weedner's Gardeners out of California. And actually, they're new to Oklahoma and some new cultivars, and we're just going to see how well they'll do. And one of the first ones they've sent us is a brachycomb, and the cultivar is Ultra. Brachycombs have been in Oklahoma for a while, primarily as hanging baskets, but this is one that they're promoting in a rock garden. It's a little bit more dwarf color. Notice the bluish purple flower. And it's actually just about to be taken over with another plant that we didn't get from California, but from Kansas, from the botanical gardens in Wichita, and it's called Indian Runner. It's a ground cover, very aggressive. We're going to have to keep it trimmed out here has yellow daisy-like flowers, but we really don't know a lot about this one. We're having a hard time tracking down the information, but it does like the hot sun, and it's a nice contrast with foliage, although the flowers are not that uh, proliferate. Also, you'll notice that we have lantana, one of the cultivars that's just complementing. Of course, that's a good one for Oklahoma. It just uh, can't beat it for the heat. But back behind it is another one of the new ones from California. This is a helichrysum. Golden Beauty is a cultivar, but this is primarily known as straw flower, again, commonly grown as a cut flower in Oklahoma. But notice how dwarf this one is, a brilliant yellow flower, and also notice how they close up at night. So it won't be too much longer. They'll be opening up, and remember, they, they're very brittle and crisp, and it, it sounds dry to start with, but it's a nice cultivar here in our garden. Back behind is one called Plectranthus. It's primarily grown for its foliage. It's got a fragrant foliage. You'll see this one as a foliage potted plant. But notice where we have it up against a building, the cultivar the, is green and, and very lush out here. It's bleached a little bit where it's getting too much sun. So it tells you, again, the right condition is so important, again, uh, primarily for the texture. Notice here is a Marguerite Daisy cultivar. That's a new introduction also from California. This one's called Butterfly. One over here is Vera that's white. We have a Marguerite Daisy out in the perennial bed that's just fallen all over the place. But these are nice dwarf compact mounding plants. Great flower color. Look like a daisy flower. So really quite a step up in improvements. And so far doing really well here in the full sun. Now this one we introduced you to last year in some container baskets we're trying it as a bedding plant called scavola blue wonder it has a fan-shaped flower purple with a little bit of yellow dotted in the center and it's just doing wonderfully very aggressive here in the full sun again and and you can see it's a spreading sprawling type and there's also a smaller cultivar with a little bit smaller foliage and flower I think most everyone's familiar with vinca or periwinkle, and this one is pretty and white, so it's pretty much a truly white flower with just a little bit of a yellow center, and it's a nice complement with our color scheme of purple, white, and yellow. And almost hidden behind the periwinkle is Lysimachia golden globe. Procumbens is, is really a name for dwarf and sprawling, and we should have known that, but for some reason we thought it'd get a little bit taller, and sure enough, the plants are just about to take over, but it's a beautiful little plant with buttercup type flowers and it's a native of China and they really promote it as a heat loving plant and so far it's doing really nice for us but it probably should have been on the border instead of back in the middle. And then on down here is our impatient and this one is actually African Queen and exclusive from Burpee Seed Company and it's the supposed to be the truly first yellow flowered impatient. Now you'll notice there's not any flowers on this one yet, and it said that it's fond of shade, and boy is that so obvious. When we first planted, we had a shading pattern here. Now it's moved up against a building because it's on the north side, and these in front are truly sunburned, and we're not getting hardly any flower buds set. We are on the ones in the back a little bit, so hopefully in a few days we'll get some nice yellow flowers. You'll notice that they're a little bit taller, about 14 inches compared to most impatient. So that's a nice uh, option, especially with the yellow flower. So we're real anxious to see what's going to happen. So a lot of new things coming out on the market. It's very exciting. And we want to thank Doug Needham of our horticulture department and some of his students for helping design and plant this garden. 
And the best way is to go to the garden centers and ask and see what they're carrying that's new. And if they don't have any of these things, request that they carry them for next year. And that way you can share in part of the fun and trying some new annuals as well. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.